Thank you everyone for coming and I'm sorry for the delay. Uh, today our first speaker is Colin. Uh, he is a uh, radio, he has a range of specialties depending on interaction and behavioral design and behavior direction through software, architecture, and uh, data capital. Uh, during high school, he consulted for Win uh, Windows division at Microsoft and upon graduating, joined the Xbox team. Uh, he later went to fund Junior and co found Inski and currently serves as, as the head of product and engineering. He's previously served as an in house tech advisor uh, for musicians like Ray Gaga, Kanye West, and Beyonce. So, we welcome him. And then yes, so, hi guys. Apologies for the delay. I actually typed in uh, Hamid and just into Google Maps, and apparently there's another Hamid and Paul over in uh, Occidental College. So, we'll just come over from there. Um, so, I guess, you know, just to start, uh, kind of my introduction there is, but you know, where it kind of all began for me was around uh, 2003. There was this uh, early version of Windows, it was code named Windows Longhorn. Um, so it was a pretty ill-fated project. Uh, this is what turned into Windows uh, Vista. But Windows Longhorn was first shown in 2003. Uh, and so, started around then, they showed this first version, this new version of Windows. It was some, it was all sorts of new technology that Microsoft had been working on all through the 90s into the early 2000s. It was things like 3D graphics and the operating system itself, um, and some other fun stuff like that. So I really, really wanted to try this out. And it was all, you know, really internal. They were just kind of showing it off to get to start to get some developers excited about it to build for the platform. So when when they showed this, uh, I went and signed up to be a beta tester for Microsoft Office. This was in about 2004. So you just have to lie, say you're 18, and you know they just let you in. Um, they don't check any of that. So with one of the uh, with one of the talks that had been given about this operating system. If you guys ever use Windows at all, that there's a file explorer. It shows you what path you're in in the browser. And so they uh, do videos of these. So I found what that old path was. And in one of my bug reports for Office, put together a little script. And in that script, it basically went and crawled that location on the network, pulled off all these early versions of Windows, and dumped them on a server in my basement, which I then leaked uh, to everyone. And so I got caught. Um, <clears throat> and my options basically were that they said I can uh, come consult for them or they can turn it over to the FBI to be prosecuted. So I went with the go help them when I'm 14 option because that sounds like fun. Um, so I got to, st you know, I, I started just with, uh, by tracking down other people who were leaking information from inside Microsoft just because it was kind of a network of people I was in. And over time, it developed into uh, actual projects, uh, helping with different projects, you know, just saying, hey, uh, to you know, the people I was working with there, do you have anything else I can help with? And so over time, it just uh, started to expand into actually helping them with things. Uh, so, you know, started at low-level stuff, like trying to find very low-level bugs in Windows, uh, in the kernel itself, and then eventually getting into the design space there. So, you know, this is around when I'm 16, 17, they would fly me out. You know, there was this, uh, when, they were, when they were testing, this was then around the Windows 7 time frame after Vista had shipped. Um, you know, in, that, in that period, they would fly me out uh, a few times a year, and I got to meet basically any team. They would just take me along, and I would say, hey, I'm interested in this one feature, this product team, and they'd bring me, and I'd get to go meet with it and help on little parts of that. So this takes me right up until uh, the end of high school. Um, I decided to graduate a semester early so I could go work for Microsoft. Uh, I set it up with, you know, set up with my school. Uh, my manager at Microsoft had like write a letter to my school, my school board. And so then December comes. This is December 2008, and I have about a week of school left. And I decided I didn't want to join Microsoft just yet, full time, because I'm still basically a kid, and I wanted to try all that. So I lived in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, by the way, and during uh, during all this happening. Um, so around then, you know, I'm done with high school, still have like, uh, all my friends are still in school, so I drive down to Columbus, Ohio, and that's where Ohio State University is, I have some friends down there. And so I basically just start living on their couches for uh, about four months just because I wanted to see what college is actually like, um, because I was clearly not going to be going to college. Um, you know, during my Microsoft work in high school, I definitely let my uh, education slip there, but I was working on something else and had a job lined up, so that was kind of why I did that. So, you know, 
just kind of did nothing in the middle of Ohio for a little while. Um, after that, after getting a little bit bored with that, decided to join Microsoft full time, and that's when I joined uh, the Xbox team. And I don't know if you guys remember the Xbox Connect, that was the hand motion controller. Um, I joined as a designer for the uh, Xbox interface on that team. And so, you know, we're working on that. This comes up to right around uh, mid 2010. Uh, the guy who had been running Windows, him and I never really got along. He was coming in to take over Xbox as well, so me and about 30 other people, including like the president of the division, we all resigned on the same day, uh, May 25th, uh, 2010. So after that, it was back to, well, what am I going to do now? Uh, so I decided I wanted to start a company and try and build my own operating system. And that's where Lumiere comes into play. That was that other company, my first company. And so I spent, uh, this, at this time, I'm living in Seattle. Microsoft's based in Seattle, actually Redmond. There's a little, people, people can be very pedantic there about the Redmond-Seattle distinction. But uh, so, so after I had left, started working on building this new company. Um, Microsoft's vice president of mergers and acquisitions heard I was working on this, tried to get me to come back to Microsoft. I said no. So he's like, okay, well, just invest in it. So he invests in this company. This is around the end of 2000. This is December 2010. So January of the next year starts. And, and so that's when, you know, things really start to take a bit of a different turn from, you know, the stand, you know, obviously working at Microsoft in high school is its own sort of different thing, but then a whole other sort of career track in the more startup world started. Uh, so Hank, my first investor, he had introduced me to a guy by the name of Peter Thiel. Uh, and so I went to meet Peter uh, in January 2011, and he decided to put a bunch of money into this company and help me just get it going. And that's kind of where I started to meet all these, all these folks like, uh, like Christine, I um, was actually at one of Peter's events. And so you know, it, was a really, it was a really interesting process to actually try and build your own company. It's exceptional. It was way harder than I thought it was going to be. You know, at Microsoft, I was surrounded with all, by all these really, really talented developers. And whenever I wanted to work on a project, I could basically go and just pick a few developers and say, hey, let's work on this. And what I didn't really realize is all those developers are being paid like $250,000, $300,000 an hour or, uh, a year because they are the best at what they do. And when you're doing a startup, you don't really have that same luxury. So that was a really difficult, uh, difficult thing to learn. It was also, you know, trying to build an operating system is exceptionally hard. <clears throat> so, you know, this is something that, you know, when you're, when you're doing something that you care a lot about, you're putting in like 60, 70 hours a week just because it's fun, because you actually enjoy it. Um, and that was something that I did with, with this company for a number of years. And Eventually, money runs out, not enough progress is made, and you have to shut down something you care a lot about and you've put a lot of your life into. And that's a really, really uh, awful kind of feeling. And you know, the nice thing was, is when I was doing this company, I got to meet a whole bunch of interesting folks. Uh, there was this one guy by the name of Troy Carter. He was... Uh, he, he, was, he discovered Lady Gaga and was managing her at the time. So we met and he invested in the company just because he thought it was interesting. I have this sort of thesis that pop culture is a means to which technology prol proliferates itself. Um, basically, pop culture is a way for new technologies to spread. And so he really liked this idea. So Troy now actually is pretty much out of the music business and now has a portfolio of over 150 tech companies. But the reason I mention that is, you know, so all this stuff starts to wind down. Um, it's pretty depressing. It's, it's a real sad part about entrepreneurship and doing something you really care about. Uh, and I think anyone, you've, anyone you talk to who's done a startup will tell you the same thing as when it doesn't go well. And it's something you, you really have to spend some time recovering from. So the nice thing was, though, is I made these connections in the music industry and decided to go do that for a little bit. And so I worked with Gaga on some stuff. I worked with... Uh, I got to go work with Kanye on a project he was trying to start... He was trying to start a company called uh, Donda, and this was going to be basically him doing everything. Like, he wanted his own airline, he wanted his own uh, smartphone, all this stuff. And so my job was, it was like, there was literally over 100 different categories that he wanted, he wanted to raise a billion dollars for this. And so my job was basically, like, literally take a billion dollars at once and just go build this. He would call it the uh, Disney for Kanye West ideas. 
And so my job was to try and take three of these and just try and make them into an actual initial concept and company. Um, so, you know, we worked on that for a little while. Uh, he's an interesting, interesting character. Com that, his, uh, that, that project didn't go the way he intended it either. Um, and so, you know, after that, I spent a little while just trying to collect myself, a little bit of out in the wilderness, and a lot of driving around the country, got a cheap car, and got to see large parts of the country, which was fun. Um, after that, I had met, uh, met back up with one of my investors for my first company. You know, this takes us into the end of 2014. Uh, and he he'd said, you know, I'm, wor I'm working on helping start this new company out in New York. Um, this was called Inksy. This was going to be one around, you know, just custom, customized products of like, you know, T-shirts, phone cases, that, that type of stuff. And, you know, the interesting thing about that was that, that the uh, co-founder of the company, he, he his father had had the uh, second largest promotional printing product company in the country. So, you know, all those little, like, pens that you see, those little squeeze balls, like, all that, all that stuff that you usually end up throwing away. Um, he made tons of that stuff. So this was going to, so this looked like something that was a real strong opportunity. And it turns out that for some people born into money, they equate that with a uh, natural assumption of success, and they kind of take out the hard work part. And that's kind of what happened in that, compa in that company. And, you know, so the thing is, is you find some of these people who, especially, you know, I know you guys all come from very different backgrounds. The, you know, being born into wealth is not, is not equal to the propensity for success. And that's, you know, one thing I would just always try and keep in the back of your mind. So this company, this one also doesn't work out. But... So this is uh, in New York, decide to take a break from tech again for a little bit. And then over time, uh, this, is, you know, this then takes us into 2016, and met back up with an old friend of mine who used to work for Peter Thiel, and she recruited me to join her company as the head of product. And that's, uh, that's where I'm at right now. And so, you know, really what I wanted to do... Uh, what time do we have right now? Um, yeah, so I, was, I abridged that down quite a lot just because I was running a bit late, so I uh, skipped a couple parts in there. But, you know, there were three sort of real takeaways from there, uh, from this whole experience. You know, so I rejoined my friend. We've been working on this now for about a year and a half and going real well. So that's kind of what I've, that's the whole path of basically going from sitting in a basement in Cleveland, Ohio, to running all the way through Seattle to San Francisco, New York, LA, working in, you know, corporate Microsoft world, starting a few companies, raising some money, and working for a bunch of celebrities. Um, you know, some of the core things I learned while I was doing this is, you know, one, you really have to work very, very hard if you want to be successful. Uh, there's a lot of people who are really, really smart. Uh, even if you are as smart as them, you have to work just a little bit harder than them. And this is something I've seen with people time and time again, different companies I've worked with. Uh, so that's just a really big one. The other one is, the other flip side of that, be really nice to as many people as possible and try and be a real friend to a lot of people. There's this Conan O'Brien quote, um, you guys are probably too young to remember from when he got into a fight with Jay Leno. Uh, there, was, there was a whole nighttime show thing they were trying to, they were fighting with each other about. And uh, he had this quote I really liked that said, work really hard, be really nice, and amazing things will happen. And that's kind of something that's always stuck with me. Another one that, w that, that I'd sort of thought that had stuck with me since I was really young is find something bigger than yourself and dedicate your life to it. And that was by a guy by the name of uh, Dan Dennett. And you know, when you have a higher level concept of what you're trying to do, uh, impact you're trying to have in the world as opposed to, you know, just trying to have these sort of short-ended goals. It really helps you sort of keep, keep yourself grounded, but also, you know, pick yourself back up from some of those knocks that you might get. Um, and, you know, these tie in, the reason I, I mention these both is all these opportunities that I've had that have continuously come up for me have been because I've sort of lived my life by those two quotes um, and been able to 
keep these really good relationships, work hard with people, build really cool things with them, and you get to have a lot of fun. You get some sad parts, but a lot of fun on the way too. It's just kind of about balancing them, knowing what you want to do, and having some perseverance in there. So I guess that'll be my abridged version of the talk. So I was a consultant. I wasn't an intern. It was a, on a per-project basis. Um, Did you go to college? Nope. Skipped college. Went straight to Microsoft. Did you find it easier that you didn't have to go to college? Or do you wish you would have wanted to go to college? Yeah, I go back and forth on that a lot. Um, like, you know, I have younger cousins who I'll hang out with and stuff. And uh, be like, yeah, you know, that seems really fun. They're also, you know, I think that... The nice thing about college is, is it gives you a lot of time to figure, out, figure yourself out. I was pretty lucky in that you know, when I was really, really young, like 13, I knew that I wanted to build operating systems, and that was my core passion. Um, and so if you, you know, if you have a strong conviction about what you want to do with your life, and you really believe in that, uh, try and find your own path. If you don't, uh, then maybe you want to go to college to try and spend some time to figure it out. Hmm? Yes. Okay. So, uh, what was it supposed to be? So, this was called Lumiere, and so this was basically, uh, my bet was, I don't know if you guys remember Windows 8, um, this is a large part of why I left Microsoft, because I thought it was going to be an abject failure, which it initially was. The president of Windows got fired over that, now he's a venture capitalist, so that's kind of standard career track there. Um, but so it was basically meant to be its own sort of operating and UI model independent of what you would see with something like Windows 8. I thought there was going to be a big opportunity to try and subplant some of what Microsoft is doing by integrating with their operating system so all those applications already worked, uh, but you have a much better uh, user experience. So yeah, I can, we can, uh, a little later I can show you some of the other stuff from it. You, you like operating systems, you said? Cool. Um, yeah, we can go over there. We can get in touch, too, afterwards, and we can talk. I think someone over here had a question. Maybe? No? Yeah, of course. So, uh, so your first company was mostly about technology, then you moved to those products, like consumer, consumer products. Yep. And you, like, I, and you also mentioned, like, knowing what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it's obvious you want to build. Sure. So, so you know, my real passion was operating systems, and that's why I did it. That's what I did uh, in Windows. Then went into Xbox, uh, working on the UI for Xbox OS. Then tried to do my own. So after that one didn't work out, I basically had to take a break from it unless I wanted to go work at Microsoft or one of those one of the other companies working on operating systems. So I sort of took, you know, just the passion I had for product design in general and applied that to different, uh, to different industries. And what you suggested? Was it basically changing? Uh, one more time? So I was asking, would you suggest that changing? Oh, yeah. It's sort of being malleable with, uh, with, with, what you're do with, with what you're doing and not being sort of, you know, it's really, it's really good to be focused on something, but it's, you know, at some point... It's good to reevaluate why you're focusing on that and potentially shift, you know, take some of the things that you do like from what you're working on, shift them into another, uh, another paradigm. Do you have any other questions? Oh, sorry. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, guys.